let me ask you something because uh, mostly how we, we would address this uh, now there's tech, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. And I'm sure any person who is listening to this and is a tech or a developer, mm. they would ask, okay, I might not be able to hold placards and go out there in the street. Mm. And one of the ways that actually we, I run a couple of communities, mm-hmm. we have tried to address different issues besides well, we don't address FGM and maybe that's not something I'm so familiar mm-hmm. with. But we address corruption and poverty. Yes, yeah. And I know from that, actually, you can really uh, grow like a generation yep. to avoid most of these things. Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the ways that we do this is train people mm-hmm. in technology. Yes. And then build solution or get a job that actually you can support yourself and avoid all this <coughs> temptation. Because one of the things that I've realized is people actually in Africa, they don't want to be corrupt. But mm-hmm. the system, the way it's configured, the, the environment you're put in, mm-hmm. you have no choice. Mm-hmm. For instance, you have a job that you, you have a job offer that you got in company X and you need a passport. Yep. And you have a month. Mm-hmm. And it's between you and this job. Someone tells you, you know what? Mm. You need 500 bucks. Yep. You're going to do everything. Absolutely. Even wrong things. Mm-hmm. So if you're not in that position, it's yeah. really hard to do this. Leila, having gone and investigated about all this, and, and I'm not sure uh, when you say you are FGM survivor, mm. if you, go, you went through the card or you escaped, I don't know which is which, mm. but you're going to tell us. How do you think tech can address this? So I love, I mean, when, when, when people ask, ask me to introduce myself, mm. I always say I'm a disrupt, disruptor of systems. Mm. Because the reason FGM even happened to me yes. is because there's a system that allows it to happen. Ah, uh, I see. So it's not, for me, FGM, child marriage, domestic violence, these are just buzzwords we are told to focus on. Yes. To keep us away from the actual problem. Yes. The actual problem is there's a system why this actually happens. So I don't want to, for me it's not dealing with FGM or domestic violence. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. I want to look at why these things continue mm. to happen. Yes. Because, again, and, I, and I, one of the things I've, I've, I've learned over the years, I've worked really closely with policymakers, mm. and lawmakers. You know, they're, they're the ones mm. who are setting these rules and yes, regulations. Yes, yes, yes. So for me, what we need to look at is, so maybe where tech can really play a big role, yes, is actually get a, like a, a sense. Of what, I, I would love to see how I can be. I can go on one. I can just put. I don't know. Get an app where I can just put my uh, just put my gender and which country I'm from. Mm. And just give me all the laws that are against me. Like just ah, show me what that would look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That te- that's the system. And we can address those yeah, because, each, because each water have, Because yeah. a lot of us don't have access to this. Yes. We don't have access. People don't know a constitution. No, I, I meet people who have been doing this work for 30 years, but they never thought about looking at the constitution. Up. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. We had, so I'm, part, I'm, I'm one of the leadership team on a big consortium who's trying to end FGM here in, in Africa, right? Mm-hmm. So we had a big team meeting, and I was talking to a couple of the countries. So we mm. work in Somalia, Somaliland, Senegal, and Ethiopia. Mm. So I was speaking to the Somali, Somaliland team. Mm. And, and, and I, w- I really wanted to dig deep, mm. dip dive. Yes. I wanted to dip dive into what they really meant. Right? Yes. Things need to change. Yes. They were f- so focused on getting an FGM bill. And I never, I've never been for an FGM act. For me, it's like, we should, if, if, they, if we have an act that says, don't harm children, mm. I don't need an FGM bill. Yes. Why, why, are we, why are we creating? Do you see how these systems are built? Even building new acts, there's money connected to it. Uh, I wanted to ask you something see, about this. Do you see because, how the system works? Because there's someone actually, I don't why, know. Why am I wasting trying to create a new, a new bill? If yes, we have yes. a constitution that says, yes. don't physically and emotionally and socially harm a child, FGM, all these things fall under that. Why do we need to have... Anyway, so they were focused on getting this act. And I said, can you give me a little background on how... Somaliland addresses women's issues. Mm. Guess what they tell me? There's no bill in protecting women from rape. Yes. There's no bill against on discrimination. <laughs> Literally, basic things. Yes. And the one that really shocked me was Somaliland women cannot marry a man outside of their community. It's actually illegal. I think I know about that. <laughs> but men can. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Hey. I'm That's like, a trick. So I was like, okay, let's, 
F gym is so just you're a not buzzword. allowed to love someone, but the other gender a is woman, allowed to be open about exactly. it. Exactly. Women are only supposed to, but you see how controlling the system is built. The women <sighs> have to be under our control. So I said to them, the problem is not FGM, guys. The mm. problem is there's a system in place that has no respect for women. Mm. That has to be addressed first. Yes, yes. <laughs> because if you address that first, mm. then no, no lawmaker is going to say to you, mm. oh no, cutting women is bad. Yes, yes. yes. Because, you're, because the reason they don't take it seriously, mm. they're actually telling you you can't even be in love. Yes. You live in a society where you have to be very careful who you fall in love with. That's because you're not allowed to fall in love with everyone. Because the system has been built that way. So that must be addressed. So for me, it's going back to the root of the problem. Mm. And, and, and I guess the, the, the tech world, I mean, this is just for my, like I said, yes, yes. I would love to have an app, whatever country I go to. So you're saying email, you need transparency I, on this. I, I, I want to know. I want to know how that country protects me. Yes. If something happens to me, are there laws that can protect me? I don't know what that looks like. Guys, you have had it. You have had it. <laughs> request, I know you guys can bootstrap this Layla. real quick. I want to know how safe and I feel. Yes, yes. And I want a system that can tell me this. I yes. just, as soon as I land somewhere, I want to put my gender. Where, whichever and, country, and, whichever and where, nation. And, and my race. Because, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're not a national in mm. certain countries, you don't usually get protected. So There's the laws do not apply to apply you? Apply to you. Yeah. That's an interesting fact I've known today. Yeah. <laughs> So it's 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 the system. Yes. If yes. I'm I'm constantly ranting on about something, mm. it's not these issues we keep naming. Mm. It's, you know, I, and I like I said, for me, language is very important. It's mm. very powerful. Mm. Even the word domestic violence. Mm. What's so domesticated about violence? Nothing. Tell me why is why because and I, and do you know why they did it like this uh-huh. again? It's the because the lawmakers are also a big part of this ma- massive mess because. So if a strange stranger outside, a male stranger attacks me physically. Yes. And I use the UK, right? I, I grew up in the UK. Yes. I don't have to do anything. The police will take him. He'll be prosecuted. Ba- basically beat me a blue and black, like literally. Yeah. So the law takes him. Great, right? That's a great, that's a great response. Mm. But if the title, if he carries a title partner, does the exact same act, beats me up, mm. black and blue, same situation, mm. but because he's my partner that's a whole different scenario unless i give evidence against him or report him he won't be taken by the police do you see how these systems are <laughs> built so when we're saying domestic what? violence it's it, there's nothing domesticated so now because because it's my partner it's the domesticated version and i can tell you leila mm. most of us are ignorant we, we all learn it. i had to learn we're educated too. but ignorant about some mm. of these facts and it's good we're having this conversation i'll give you another example yeah i want people to hear. Honor killing. Have you heard of honor killing? Uh, no. So honor killing is very big amongst the Asian and the, the, the Middle Eastern communities. Even in Africa, yeah. It, there's, there's something called honor killing. It's when a girl, ref, you know, the family, she goes against something like the family. She marries the wrong guy or she's seen. Uh, um, but when I say honor killing, so to family, it's just her going to the cinema. It's like, and they kill her. It, it's for the honor of the family. She's actually killed. So in the UK, we really challenge this language. Hmm. Because she's from an Asian family or African or Middle Eastern, all of a sudden, it was honorable. <laughs> That's the way the legal system was <laughs> what presented. What is honorable about killing was, someone? It's murder. But when a white girl got killed, it was murder. <laughs> First degree. Uh. But the honor killing, they will get less sentence because, you know, it's his culture to want to strangle his own child. Yes. In his bath. I mean, there was a famous case that I was actually... I was brought into in the UK. It was called um, the Banaz Mahmood case. Yes. Because they found out during the autopsy. Yes. She was Kurdish. Yes. They found out she had FGM. So they needed to bring experts to this. This guy, she only had a boyfriend. I think she was Kurdish. He was Turkish. Literally right next door. Uh. And her father did not just kill her. He cut her into pieces and put her in a suitcase. He was convicted under the honor killing. And what do you get from honor killing? Because conviction? you get le- lesser sentence. Like six you, months of community work? Or? No, no. I mean, usually with uh, murder, you might get like 15 years, 20 years. He must yeah. have gone like 10 years. And with good behavior, he could have left. I think he might uh, have been out of prison. I don't know by now. And but what yeah, I'm saying is yeah. like, but, the, I, but you see the justice we give to girls of color. Mm. When they get harmed, we call it child marriage. Uh, FGM, which is a cultural practice. Yes. It's honor killing. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Give us what we deserve. Like, yes. give us the justice we deserve. And sometimes it's just calling it for what it don't. 
Don't say. I mean, FGM. The actual term is serious sexual assault. Yes. You're touching a child's genitalia. It's sexual assault. Mm. You couldn't touch a child's genitalia right now. You'd be arrested. Mm. Why? Just because they call it circumcised that all of a sudden that's changed. So for me, you have to if we're going to challenge systems, yes. we have to challenge the language. Yes. It comes hand in hand. Ah. Cuz once you get the language right, see now next time someone says to you domestic violence, you're going to say What's so domesticated about this? <laughs> where's the where's the law? So I would like to know how Kenya treats domestic violence mm. cases because it's it's to protect the men again. Mm. What about gender violence? But gender-based violence is all of them. Mm. Gender violence means you've been violated mm. because you were born from that gender. Mm. You I always say, you know, I remember saying years ago in a conference I said, "Oh my god, I've been convicted just because I was born female." Mm. I was convicted with a lot of violence, but mm. it's emotional abuse sexual harassment whenever you're going somewhere <laughs> like literally yeah. women are never feeling safe like yes. you're always worried am i going to be attacked yes and am it's I interesting always Layla? Fear? there's that constant fear you're carrying around yes it's interesting um that i have had this discussion offline with mm. different people mm. and uh, if you pay a keen eye nowadays there's even men who are violated absolutely a lot oh yes a lot and for me i know girl child has been going through a lot mm. for a long especially african girl child for a long time mm. and uh, addressing that is really really important 100%. but if you are not careful and this is my feeling mm. we're going to address the girl child issues all of them mm. and guess what mm. down the line mm. we need to address the boy child issues ah, so what is your take on that oh no let me explain what i what i mean yeah. so when i design girl child program yes all children are involved including boys mm. because there's no point of just making her powerful and mm. safe mm. without because if you don't keep him safe he has yeah. to be part of her journey yes what i mean is let's not forget the girls at the fore like she's the one who's at risk right now yes but to make sure she's safe 100% safe you have to work with everybody all around the stakeholders or everybody yes every just cuz usually what happens in these programs is the other way around yes yes what what i'm saying is she's the most one vulnerable let's keep her here yeah but we need to work with her dad yes. brother her uncle her teacher who's also a male you know the community leader on like so it has to be done like that but let's not forget that she's at the front that's what we're saying yes the way I, the way I'm designed this is the girl has to be at the front because she's she's not safe that's and, just the world yeah. she lives in yeah but in order for her to be 100% safe mm. we have to work with the men and that's boys. quite smart because if you, you don't involve do all the stakeholders again no, you no, save no, the no, same no, same no. problem no, no. for yeah. me it's yeah. the way these programs are designed that are dangerous sometimes mm. then you you then you constantly put in the power back to those that already had the power mm. i'm ch- what i'm saying let's just reshift the power let's just share the power equally mm. not taking pa- not one person should take the power so that we can give share the, other. the power mm. equally. Mm. that's the way we design our programs mm. it has to be and actually let's all circle this girl mm. actually one of the girls who so we in, in Kenya we recently launched a survivors led training mm. where we work with survivors who are running organizations we're giving them how do you run your organization how do you run uh, uh, how do you deal with the media uh, we give them a basic counseling course like how do you deal with emotional impact how do you run an organization in a healthy way mm. And recently I met up with some of the girls and one of them said, "Wow, you know what I'm realizing? We really we need to really keep making sure you're right. Mm. We need to make sure we work with everybody because she goes, if I get too powerful, they won't be able to cope." Yeah. Yeah. Then it puts me more at risk. Yeah. So even with those who I work with, I'm constantly challenging them because you know the word empowerment is thrown around yes, all yes. the time. Yes, yes. Actually, a, a quick story, my I have a daughter who's going to be 20 mm-hmm. in August. Yes. And so when we were designing this program, a couple of years ago. Mm. So I was I was putting together the vision. Mm-hmm. And I'm like a lot of these jargon words. I don't want this. Like yes. this has to be real real. Like yes. it has to be authentic and real. I thought I'll talk to my daughter about and what it was like. And close to you. So I said let me talk to her about what it was like for her to be a girl raised by me. Maybe something will come up from that conversation. And yeah. I said, "What was it like that you had a mother who empowered you?" Mm. <laughs> She went, "Oh, I didn't know you empowered me." I was so offended by this by the way. <laughs> I was like, "Excuse me, after everything I did for you, like, yeah, do you see yeah. what we did to our kids?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she said, "But mom, I thought I was already born with power. I didn't know you gave it to me. I thought you maintained my power for me. Uh-huh. You created a safe space 
to make sure I, exer- I exercise yes. my power. Yes. So she said to me, if you empower me, it means you can take it from me. If mm. you give it to me, mm. then you have the, the power, power to take, take it, it away. Yeah. Oh man, what a lesson that was for me. And I, that is always in the back of my mind mm. when I'm doing this work. I'm like, no, 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 we're not empowering girls. Let's make sure they exercise the power they have. They already have power. Girls are born with power. And I remind that to every girl. I go, no, 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 you're not powerless. Mm. You have power. You were born with power. Except people around you are trying to take it away from you by mm. not giving you the right job. Yes. By blocking you from going to the right university. Yes. By being given away to a 65. That's how we control girls' power. Mm. Girls are born with power. They have it. Yes. We just need to make sure we create spaces. And I guess coming back to the world of tech. Yes. The tech world is still dominated by men. So I think this is where, why we have, again, we have to work together, right? Men and women. Yes. Men have the duty to create a safe space for the women in the, in the tech space. Because mm. when you speak to a lot of women, they're scared to come to the tech space. Mm. It's, it's very dominant. Imagine if she's uh, uh, abused by her dad, beaten by her brother, then raped at some point, harassed at university. How is she going to come to this space? And this happens to all the girls. Most women, this is a very common story. So why would she come to a male-dominated space? She's going to go and become a nurse or a teacher where there's a lot of women. There's a genuine fear. So the tech space really has a role. And I'll, I'll challenge AT community to really think about how do we start creating a safe space for women to come? What mm. do we need to do? Do we need to create hackathons just for women, run by women? Mm. Do we need to start creating solidarity spaces where we can talk to women in our, in our own company where we can say, hey, actually, guys, tell us your experience. We mm. don't even know because I'm sure. I, I'm challenging you after our, our conversation today. Yes, yes. Pay more attention to the women who work in this company and yes. just ask, hey, why? Well, what's, what's your why, experience yeah, yeah. in working in a space which is just full of men all the time? Mm. And you'll be surprised. That, that itself is you creating a safe space yes. to even share that fear. Because the moment you release that fear, yeah. it's no longer there. But we're yeah. walking around with fear yeah. all the time. You just, you, a lot of the women I've spoken to in tech would say to me, their aim when they go to work is not to be sexually harassed. Mm-hmm. Imagine, you don't have to think about that when you go to work. You well, don't think about well, that. Well, nowadays, sometimes... Uh, I'm, pointing anyway. at, I'm pointing at the camera guy too. <laughs> do you think about being sexually harassed when you come to work? Is that the back of your mind when you leave? You go, oh my God, oh, I'm going to be harassed today. I really just want to get my tasks yes, done. Yes, yes. But that's I women's experience. Yes, yes, yes. So it's really important that we address a safe space to bring that up. Mm, mm. Yeah. And now, uh, this, <laughs> this actually is sometimes for someone out there, maybe who is single, who has not really had a close partner. Mm. The closest they have gotten to is their sister. And that's a different yeah. relation, right? Mm. And maybe they're looking for someone. Mm. Where do you draw the line between, you know, uh, presenting your manifesto to be either a boyfriend or mm. marry someone? Say manifesto. I love that. I think we should. We and should. But you know, I think we shouldn't joke about that. I think it's not a joke it's because not a, joke. a young yeah. guy out there is confused, mm. especially with the current situation right now. Yeah. Because they're afraid maybe they have seen a beautiful girl. They don't know and they have to. clear intentions. Yep, but they don't know how to approach Be, it. Because they are also afraid, like, this lady might report mm. them to the HR and say, yep. I'm sexually harassed. How do we address mm. such, you know, issues? Because you don't talk so much about that. So let me take you back to a system again. Yes. Our schools have failed us big time. Mm-hmm. Like, when we leave school, mm-hmm. I mean, I left school, when I was I knew about algebra, knew about, about IT, mm. but the most basic things I needed in life, I didn't know. No one taught me. No one yes. taught me about relationships Yes. and managing money. Like Those Absolutely. are key skills. Absolutely. And well-being. Yes. Those three things, no one spoke to me about. So, you, so all of us were felt. So it's not just men, even women. Actually, yeah. working with these girls, actually, I was, and the way we, we work with girls, we say, what do you need? Mm. And actually, one of them said, mm. do you know what we need? She needs, she goes, we need like a manual mm. for boys and girls mm. where we learn about healthy relationships and sex. Yes. She goes, sometimes, she goes, I'm in a university campus and everybody's lost. Mm-hmm. Everybody's harming everybody. The women are harming the men. The men are harming the women because we just don't know even the vocab. Like, she goes, we, we might even need the script sometimes. Yes, yes. Just to help us. Mm. How do I ask that question? How do I, because you know, you can become someone's friend at yes. first and be attracted to them afterwards. Yes. But you're right. Maybe, maybe, but, but these are actually, there aren't, there aren't, we, it's like how you learn, you learn how to do this, right? This podcast. Mm. You're going to read instructions. I'm still learning. <laughs> and you're still learning. Yes. And relationships are like that. Yes. We just don't have recently. Um, so I've got my, one, my, 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 my best friend. 
two of my very good friends got married a mm. year ago. They're having, about to have a baby. Mm. So I'm the godmom. Yes. I wanted to get this baby like really good books about relationships mm. and sex. And mm. Like just, because these are, how, relationship and sex are very real things that yes. happen every day. Yes. And there was nothing targeting black children. I was horrified. I was like, oh my God, here we go again. So maybe it's time for us to start producing. So we need to maybe find. Let me give this a little bit of context mm -hmm. uh, because I've seen these arise. And I'm talking about there. books for children, by the way. Yes. There's a great book mm. for African women now that recently came out called ah. Sex Lives of African Women. Say that again. Sex Lives of African Women. It's the first wow. guide for African wow. women to wow. read. Is it accessible everywhere? Oh, you can buy it in most shops here in Nairobi. She oh, actually came. Nice. She's a really good friend. She came and did a whole play. Like, so one of, one of the, she's a theater producer here mm. who runs her own podcast as well here, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it's called interesting. The Spread. Yeah. It's called The Spread. And, and they did a play mm. where they demonstrated six African women's relationships. Yes. <gasps> We never had that before. Mm. So we need to start creating these spaces. So mm. going back to your question, how do you approach it? Sometimes a lot of us still are learning because we mm. never had a guide. Well, I'm actually and it's a taboo to talk to your children about sex and relationships. Again, again, coaching. challenging the tech community. Mm. How do we start creating those systems where mm. a guy can go, okay. Well, there was Tinder and you know there is that <laughs> documentary on Netflix about the Tinder swindler. Aye, oh Lord, oh my gosh. There was, uh, when I was, <laughs> oh when I was young and, and yeah. looking, there was to go. It was mm. made by South Africans. Ah. And then after that, there was, there have there been that's, a couple, that's, of, but they're not what not to do. Mix. That's what not to do in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. But that was also interesting. Yes, the, yes. The, yes. The, 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 is it tender swindler? Yes. Again, this is where race is very important. Yes. Those women yes. would never have gone to that point if that guy was black. Mm. Oh, you should have seen Black Twitter when that documentary came out. They mm. were like, oh my God, they wouldn't, because you know they were just sending mm. money because he was a white man who was, who would, oh. but if that was a black man on a jet, they would not have done it twice. Never have done, okay. Do you see I where see. we have to address these I things? I see, I see. We're dealing and, with And by the way, this is interesting because, and fascinating at the same time because mm. when I used to use to go, I don't know if it's still there, mm. the relationship were quite authentic. Mm. I could meet authentic people. When I checked out Tinder out of curiosity and mm. to understand the tech out mm. there, mm. there was so much of um, ratchetness. Hey, oh God. <laughs> so much of it. <laughs> and even when I saw that documentary, I was not su surprised. I mm. said, this is designed from the uh, white perspective of relationships. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think online dating has been very important to the mm. world, mm -hmm. the world that we're living in. Yes. But again, we're still not, we don't have black friendly uh, dating, apps. dating apps. Actually, uh, another statistic I looked at years ago, yeah. the people who are not approached mm. in dating apps are black men. They're the least. There's some truth in that. There's, they're, they're the least. Uh, because, you know, black women are seen as exotic animals. Oh. So white men want to date black women just because, you know, she, they fetishize you. Oh. So we, we, the only reason we beat black men is mm. out of it, just fetish, fetishness. That's mm. it. But actually, black men are not, not approached in online. They, mm. They're the lowest. They, they score the lowest mm. in terms of uh, being approached or even someone trying to add them. Or anything so black, serious yeah. because even from yeah. fetish, uh, approach yeah. is not yeah. that yeah. serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.